Conditions like osteoarthritis and even general wear and tear are characterized by damage to the cartilage in the knee, the hip, and the spine. So it stands to reason that consuming collagen, a structural protein that provides strength and integrity to the joint, could be consumed and help repair that damage. But what does the research actually say? Does the reasoning actually stand up to the scientific scrutiny? And are there potential nuances that people are missing? Well, for that, I went through three studies to try to understand how consuming collagen affects our joints as a structural protein in our cartilage. It is formed into rod-like helical structures that maintain the physical integrity around the joint. Without it, we can get instability in the joint or stiffness due to a lack of elasticity and even pain due to the inflammatory reaction in the joint, like that seen in some arthritis. But the structural protein in our cartilage is quite different from the collagen that we typically consume because collagen can be consumed undenatured, meaning its original structural form, or it can be consumed in a denatured form, meaning the helical structure of the collagen has been unraveled. And in more extreme cases like hydrolyzed collagen peptides, it's also been cut up into small fragments. Clearly only the first, so the undenatured or native form is the one similar to what we find in our joints. Unfortunately, it's long been believed that the pieces that make up proteins like collagen called amino acids, are the only things that can actually be absorbed. And they can only be absorbed individually through these amino acid transporters in the intestinal cell membrane. However, that's been debunked by research showing that two and three amino acid peptides, so two or three amino acids bonded together, can also be absorbed as seen here. We can see that the dipeptide proline and glycine amino acids are measured in the blood after absorption, indicating that the peptides can cross the epithelial, the intestinal barrier through specific peptide transporters. So now we have an opening for collagen peptides, these smaller fragments to get through and potentially be biologically active. And we'll get to that in just a minute. However, what about intact collagen, the native collagen. Well, one review mentions that native collagen can also be absorbed. I have to admit, I was pretty surprised by that announcement. So I did a bit of digging outside of these main studies that I analyzed and guess what? There is some evidence that might be true. Now, I'd like to take some time to really dive deeper into the literature before I'm convinced, but this study did feed native collagen to rats and then measured the impact their blood had on joint cells, and they did show an anti-inflammatory effect. So one explanation is that intact native collagen crossed the intestinal barrier and caused this anti-inflammatory effect. But until I actually see measures of blood collagen, I remain skeptical. Still, in this review, the researchers point out that native collagen could have an in-between effect where a section of the native collagen called an epitope could create tolerance to collagen. That's important for people with autoimmune-induced arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis because the immune system will invade into the joint structure recognizing collagen's proteins are other and destroying them. However, if a person consumes collagen, the immune system can sensitize specialized cells that activate the immune system to essentially get used to collagen, thereby stopping this overreaction by the immune system to bodily collagen, stopping the degradation of collagen. So in short, the consumed collagen is like a distraction from your bodily structured collagen. That's a pretty big deal because you're shutting off the main perpetrator that's causing all this joint harm. And in said review, they point out that the epitope, that section of the native collagen, is enough. It's not necessarily the full collagen protein. The researchers argue that the epitope can be absorbed by specialized intestinal cells along with moving between the cells. So in summary, collagen epitopes get absorbed by multiple mechanisms interacting with specialized immune cells, and these immune cells then communicate to other immune cells to change from a pro-inflammatory state to an anti-inflammatory state. There's a lot more to say on this whole thing, but I wouldn't say I'm entirely convinced yet either. Anyway, while I think that the potential anti-inflammatory mechanisms of collagen consuming are well, fascinating, but what about the non-inflammatory effects? 
Well, one of the areas that has better research, at least from an absorption perspective, is collagen peptides. These proline, hydroxyproline, glycine amino acids, bonded peptides have been shown to interact with key collagen producing cells called chondrocytes. Exactly how isn't exactly certain, possibly through receptors on the cell surface. But we know that these peptides are bioactive, meaning it's not just giving the substrate for native collagen production, but actually changing the signaling inside the cells to produce more native collagen. Okay, again, plenty more to say, but we have a few mechanisms by which collagen, its native form, its epitope, or the peptides encourage joint collagen production and reduce collagen degradation in the joint. But we also know that we don't base conclusions on mechanisms alone. So are there human trials that indicate benefit? No. Of course there are, silly goose. See here, in this analysis, the researchers pooled all the randomized control trials that they could find on collagen supplementation and joint function and health. At the time of the analysis, there were only five studies eligible, but as I was working on this content, I happened upon yet another analysis that recently released, and that one contained 11 studies. In both of these analyses by separate research groups, they only included studies comparing collagen supplementation against placebo, so a non collagen inert substance. So when opening the first analysis and we look at a common joint health test called the Womack score, we see some noteworthy results. The studies are on the left, then the numbers are the specifics of each study. So the experiment up top being collagen and the control being the placebo condition. We aren't going to go over all these numbers, just pull your eye to the right where we get a visual representation of the results. The green boxes are the results of the individual study, so the middle vertical line indicates no benefit one way or another, and if the studies lean to the right of that line, there's a worse WOMAC score, meaning worse joint health with collagen supplementation. And if they fall to the left, that's an improvement in joint health. That black diamond at the bottom is the total effect, so all the studies combined. Clearly, it falls to the left of the line and definitely indicates a lower WOMAC, so improved joint health. But do we see that confirmed when we input more studies? Well, looky here. Same setup, but several more studies from the updated analysis. Clearly, the results remain. Even better, the effect size or the overall amount of improvement was about the same too. So, Two separate analyses offering similar results indicating collagen supplementation works to improve joint health, even when inputting more studies. Great, but there are some things that you should know before skipping off to start mass consuming collagen. Before that, there's work that's been done on collagen's effects on pain and stiffness, different amounts and timing of collagen, as well as more that's been done on the mechanisms of collagen interaction in our body. That's all covered in the extended version of the video that you're currently watching, which is, as you might already be tired of me mentioning, included for the Physionic Insiders. Membership also means that you get access to the private podcast that releases regularly, along with live sessions with me, a library of many, many other videos, weekly articles with actionable takeaways, and so much more. Oh, and you also don't get advertised to like I'm doing right now. So you'll be able to avoid all ads on everything, which that alone may be worth it so that I don't get on your nerves. But then again, if I already get on your nerves, more of me and the insiders isn't going to help that. Anyway, the link to join is in the description box. I would love to have you join the community. Now, there's several things that you should know about collagen supplementation studies, some good and some bad, mostly bad. First, the effect size or the improvement in the WOMAC that we went over was mild. A WOMAC score is between zero and 96 with lower numbers being better. Across both analyses, the reduction in WOMAC was between six and eight points. So a little less than a 10% improvement, not nothing, but not life-changing. Still, even so, there's two more things to consider in relation to that point. One, while studies included were generally at least two months long, that may simply be the detected effect at that point in time. Maybe four or six or 12 months, you'd see further improvement. The longest study was a little less than a year and did not show much effect though. 
Another consideration is these studies are focused on people with osteoarthritis. So in an already troubled population, would we expect even milder effects in people without osteoarthritis? So I'd characterize that as bad news, but there is some semi good news too. For example, these analyses largely do not include exercise and the researchers of some of these studies indicate that to really stimulate joint benefit, exercise should be paired with collagen. I will say I opened up both studies where exercise was included and either the study was of a weak design or the effect from collagen was negligible. So while it's still a possibility, the small amount of evidence that we have right now is not impressive. One additional critique is that no studies compare against just plain protein. So we also don't know if there's just a benefit of amino acids for collagen independent of the collagen structure itself. So where does that leave us? To collagen or not to collagen? A few things to sum up. One, there's definitely evidence that collagen mildly improves joint health. Two, I would stick to collagen peptides, so hydrolyzed collagen, until more evidence comes out on other forms. Three, there are still holes in the collagen literature that we need to fill in. So there's more research needed, especially since all the collagen joint research in, is industry associated. So overall, consider collagen if you have osteo or rheumatoid arthritis, but I don't expect any miracles. And if you don't have arthritis, we just don't have enough good data to say. But one supplement that has better evidence in its favor in combating arthritis is the one that I discuss right here. Or if you're interested in more on collagen's benefits, check out this right here. I'll catch you over there.